What's up, everybody? Welcome into another edition of SSPN. And Ethan, we finally got some basketball to talk about, man. The Spurs played in the California Classic. Two double-digit dubs. I don't remember the first game, but I know it was a lot more than the second against the Lakers. Mm -hmm. But I do remember that score, which was 109 to 99. Malachi and Champagny combined for 60 points in that game. And then, of course, Julian Champagny had a 30-piece the first night. And Dominic Barlow, our man, even though you know he, he had to take a step back in game two, mm -hmm. he still he still had a really impressive performance uh, in game one. And, and and just since we're talking about him, you know, even in that second game, he led the team in plus minus Ethan. So may have not been as as you know jumping out on the stat sheet, but but still contributed for sure. But just with that being said, Ethan, let's jump right into this. What were your overall thoughts, kind of on summer league or the Sacramento summer league? Well, it finally looks like, knock on wood, the Spurs will have a good summer league team, Jude. Because in years past, we've really struggled for some reason to get wins. Um, mm -hmm. But with Champagny, who we've both been high on since the end of last season, and Malachi and Barlow showing flashes of what he's been working on in the offseason, Blake Wesley as well showing uh, you know his muscle, getting to the rim with some more aggressiveness. Um, and then, of course, Wemby coming back on Friday. Things are looking very very positive for the Summer League Spurs. Absolutely, Ethan. And you know, the, these two little Summer Leagues that they have going on right now before the Vegas Summer League tomorrow, the mm -hmm. California Classic, and then the Jazz's Summer League as well, they're basically just exhibition games. Yeah. And this is about as well as they could have gone for the Spurs. We'll just start out with the man who is really, who is the leading scorer throughout the California Classic and just kind of solidified the reasons of why we put him on the small forwards breakdown thumbnail, Ethan. You know, that was the one video that, that hasn't gotten over a thousand views yet, and mm. I'm sure it has a little bit to do with Doug and Champagny being on the cover and being a little bit bigger where you got, you know, Devin and Malachi, even Trey and Blake. It's a little bit more well known. But I mean, I guess I don't know. Uh, maybe that's not a good argument, but I, that's just the only thing I can think of, because, of course, on the power forwards, you think about Wemby and then you got Sohan up there. It's just every other one yeah. got over a thousand views and that one's still at like 700. And that's really besides the point, Ethan. The point is he deserved to be on the thumbnail and he showed out in these first two games, and he also deserved that four-year contract that the Spurs mm -hmm. just gave him, very similar to Charles Bassey. Julian Champagny through the first two games of Summer League, almost 60 points himself, 58 to be exact, uh, eight rebounds in game one, five in game two, had some good blocks as well, some putbacks, Ethan. Um, obviously, it's the Summer League. That's the asterisk with all of this. The level of competition is definitely a little bit lower. For sure. Um, but still, we got to see some flashes from Champagne that we haven't seen. And on top of that, we still saw the flashes that we saw at the end of the season. Yeah, he's consistently built, Jude. And I know we were kind of debating when the season came to an end. Do you bring him back on a two-way? Do you even offer him a guaranteed contract? Is CD more ready than maybe people are giving him credit for? Maybe he deserves that spot. And I think Champagny, despite the competition thing, having an asterisk, I think these two games kind of solidified, you know, the spurt he deserved the four-year guaranteed deal that he got. I mean, he showed us the flashes last year of being a confident shooter and a capable defender. And, you know, there were moments where I was like, okay, this guy has a little bit more to his game. He can put the ball right. on the floor. You know, he knows where to be. He's a good help defender. A 6'9", so he's an above-average rebounder. And so we're like, well, maybe those things are some skill sets that, that he just hasn't had a chance to show. And here we are. Summer League, he has had an opportunity, like you said, to show a little bit more from his bag that he didn't have the opportunity to show in the regular season last year. And he is really taking – taking advantage of the opportunity that is before him. I mean, he, he is shooting the lights out, Jude, and that's something yes. that we knew he would have. But at 6'9", to also be able to create for himself and others, be at the right place at the right time, get easy baskets on the inside, the put-back jam that went viral, um, and, and his confidence, shoot is just through mm -hmm. the roof. I mean, this guy was so quiet and I, like unassuming when he came in from Philly. We yeah. were like, who, who is this dude? Is he even going to play? And then, you know, he showed some flashes, and now he is just oozing confidence and seems to be so, so comfortable with the team around him and with, you know, his skill set. And so maybe he'll have more of an effective role on the actual roster next season than even you and I were expecting. Absolutely. You know, and, and when you talk about just showing the other flashes, which I kind of alluded to to start, um, it ties into what Matt Nielsen said. They asked him about it after the contract was released before the start of Sacramento Summer League. Matt Nielsen is an assistant coach on the Spurs. Mm -hmm. You'll probably know that, but he's also the Summer League coach uh, for the Summer League stretch as well. 
And he was talking about how not only is he a good shooter, but there's a lot of other things he can do. He specifically mentioned his rebounding. Mm -hmm. Um, And and that was on display just a little bit, you know, not too much in the second game, definitely in the first one, but still just with his play around the rim, like I said, with the putbacks, the tip-ins, like, and then you also mentioned the 6'9 part. He was listed on the roster last season as 6'7". Um, so, you know, 21 years old, well, you, you never know when it comes to height, we're, we're yeah. going to have to just wait until the training camp roster, but you know, it's interesting because watching him out there, once again, at summer league, he does look a little bit bigger and the Spurs listed him at that height on the roster. And he's also a rookie. So it's like, he's still in that age where that, that could happen, you know? And if he was six, seven and three quarters, it's really not that crazy to, you know, jump up another inch but i i doubt it's probably two inches i think it's probably just one and they just yeah. list him at that because of height but the bigger thing about the height ethan is that that adds to his versatility and mm-hmm. specifically when we're talking about his rebounding that matt nielsen mentioned him at the four is something that i was not thinking about at all you know coming into this summer league yeah and it's now something that, that i can envision a little bit more not saying he's obviously not saying he's going to start there maybe he won't even be there off the bench but if you wanted to play him at the floor, like think about this, you know, if we have the starting lineup, Ethan, of what, and we'll have to see how this all plays out. This is all just speculation at this point. But for the sake of conversation, if we have the starting lineup of Jeremy Sohan, Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, Victor Wembanyama, and Zach Collins, think about this backup lineup or, you know, the bench. Yeah. Trey, Malachi, Doug, Champagne, Bassey. Yeah, it makes I sense. I mean, especially with the loss of Keita Bates Diop. Um, who we both thought was pretty much a guarantee to come back, and he went straight to Phoenix and pretty 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 quickly as well. There leaves the Phoenix opening, Spurs. The Phoenix Spurs. There leaves an opening <laughs> at that backup four spot, and you and I have kind of talked about maybe CD's ready, but the way that Champagne is playing, and Doug played a lot of four as well at six seven, and I think Champagne is a much more capable defender and rebounder yeah. than Doug is. So maybe you can. We, we talked about splitting the minutes between Doug and Champagne. Maybe now they can both get equal minutes. Exactly, Ethan. And then on top of that, you've still got two playmakers and creators in Trey Jones and, and Malachi Branham. And then you got Bassey in the yeah, middle that just a true big. And a then you I mean, just exactly. So the prospect of, of Doug McDermott and, and Champagne on the floor at the same time on the bench is definitely something that is intriguing and enticing to me. Um, we'll have to see how it all plays out, but that was kind of just positionally, that was kind of the thing that stuck out to me with Champagne. Um you know, really just a versatile defender. He just, he, the main thing that I've taken away from these first two games, Ethan, is it just seems like he's a versatile two through four Mm -hmm. in the modern NBA. For sure. For sure. Switchable as well. Now we'll talk about the other man who showed out in the first game, Ethan, and then we'll get to who showed out in the second game, which is really probably who people want to hear. But let's talk about our man, Dominic Barlow with a 24 point, 10 rebound, two block, one assist, one steal performance on 10 of 13 shooting, uh, four from six from the free throw line, but more importantly, Ethan, the dunks, the effort on defense, Mm -hmm. and of course, the mid-range. Yeah. Well, the easiest transferable skill that he showed from summer league to NBA play will be his hustle points, hustle rebounds, and just being an all-around energy guy with great athleticism and upside. That's something that is easily transferable to next season now how much play time will he get probably not that much um but he still showed some skill sets that i had no idea existed in his game the mid-range jumpers are come to mind uh, a little bit better footwork than i gave him credit for the cradle dunk the cradle dunk yeah I mean, we knew he had athleticism <laughs> but that's different kind of yeah, athleticism. yeah that was that was impressive and then the ability to switch basically one through five the entire game and guard along the perimeter extremely well for someone at his size. I was extremely impressed with what I was able to see from him. And I know it's just summer league, but just the way he approached that game one reminded me so much of Kevin Garnett back when he was on Minnesota. <laughs> I know it's completely different. This no, is but I love it. Versus a, t- a two way, but right. just the way he approached it, where he got his shots and how aggressive and versatile he was defensively gave me flashes of big ticket. <laughs> hey, big ticket in summer leagues, Dom Barlow. That's right. Until he gets Wimby with him. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, 
to talk just a little bit more about Barlow, you know, obviously there were a lot of jokes that I kind of, as the season progressed, it kind of turned a little bit more into a joke than a serious yeah, yeah. thing in all honesty. But the reason, if y'all go back and go to SSPN Reacts, there's a 20 minute video I made in like March going over an article about Dominic Barlow. And like you said, Ethan, there were some things that he showed in this game that you hadn't seen from him yet. And that's the type of stuff that they talk about in that article. And it's the reason why Brian Wright took a chance on him being the first player from overtime elite last season. To hit for, and considering once again that, you know, I mean, we'll see if somebody offers him anything. I doubt it. Um, he's going to most likely come back on a two-way. I mean, this is probably just one of the more high upside, upside two-way players that you can get. And to get him on a second year, that doesn't always happen with a lot of these two-way guys. They end up going to a different team. Um it's just, you know, a really high value two way player. That's what I would put it, considering he's still 20 years old. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots of potential there. And even in the second, even though in the second game, like I mentioned at the beginning, he fell off a little bit, didn't have the best shooting night, only three points, six boards, six assists. He did have two blocks in there. Um, it might have been a little bit more than that. Yeah, three blocks. Three blocks. There you go. Um, and then he had the highest plus minus on the team. But the bigger point about that, Ethan, is what is he going to be doing if he's playing? on like the actual Spurs getting rebounds and hustle. It, it, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it, he was able to at least do that still. Obviously it's the summer league. Like we've said <laughs> a yeah. couple times now, but he was able to still do that even after having that bad performance. Cause, and I know some people might be like, Oh, he had a trash performance in the summer league. That doesn't matter at all. But to me, I'm like, okay, but even when he had a bad shooting night, he was still doing all the things he's supposed, he's going to need to do if he ever sees the floor this season. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. And he's technically an undersized center right now. Like He's 6'10", yeah. and he's playing our center spot in the Summer League. I, I think he'd be more of a four, you know, if yeah. he got rotational minutes in Definitely. the NBA. Definitely. Um, but something from the first game that I tweet, I sent you the tweet, and it it's so funny. Remember when we almost drafted Kai Jones? I don't know how close it was, but we were right. all debating if Kai right. Jones was the guy. And he went up against Kai Jones and had a way better <laughs> game. And it's like, so we basically saved a first-round pick and found the exact same skill set and like role type role player just as an undrafted free agent last year. Literally, we we got a two way rookie that mm -hmm. <laughs> just cooked Kai Jones Pretty like much. one on one. You know, and when it comes so, down to it, they're the same. They're the same build. Going back to what, what did I just say? That I mean, very high value two way player. Yes, right. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. For that's the perfect example for that. But let's move on from Barlow, Ethan, because there's one man that everybody's going to want to talk about. He sat out the first game, but he still gave us some good content. If y'all saw the mic'd up that Malachi Branham did mm -hmm. during that Hornets game, he went crazy for that Barlow dunk, but he went even crazier when he got on the court, Ethan, mm -hmm. 32 points, five rebounds, two assists, one steal on 50% shooting from the floor and 50% shooting from three. Yeah. Headband Malachi is for real. And I'm so second, glad you brought that up. <laughs> second year Malachi has a newfound confidence and swagger to him that's so reminiscent for me to De what Devin Vassell did last season. He knows, season. man. He can tell. He he has been in the gym working. And he's posted a, a few videos. But the I think UTSA the one. The UTSA one. The coaching staff, though, has talked a lot about Malachi being in, in the lab. And like Pop even kind of, he didn't say his name, but he alluded to it. Like, these guys have been working. Like, they, they're ready mm -hmm. to go. And he, it must be, you know, culprit number one because what he was able to do in game two was extremely impressive. And I know he's a second year guy. He was, you know, he's supposed to do he's that. Supposed but... to, but it's still really impressive to see him get to his spots. You know, hit three point shots. He was play toying with for him, others, and yeah. you could tell. And and that's what he's supposed to do. Not to interrupt exactly. you no, there, you're but good. it's Go just. Ahead. I mean, like you could just tell just from the body language of his ball handling. Yeah, if that makes sense, he was like, oh yeah. I'm the best, like, it just, he knew he was the best player on the court, which he was. But some of the, like, takes that he was making, dude, like mm -hmm. the spots that we talked about, I, I'm i going to say it again. I know it's summer league, but he's, like, in traffic with three people around him at the elbow, that little elbow jumper coming off a screen. I mm -hmm. mean, there was one where he, like, put his shoulder into a guy when he was in the paint after he stopped and then went up with it, you know, like that. Um, I'm trying to describe it best with my vocabulary, but it was just, like, I mean, the stuff he was, he, he, it was like a ball is life mixtape. 
yep. in just that one game. And that's why the NBA was posting about him a bunch, you know, after that. I'm pretty sure yeah, Enjoy Basketball, that's Kenny Beecham's basketball account that mm-hmm. just got created that did a whole recap. <laughs> he he captioned Malachi's game, Malachi Branham. You know, people Brand are starting him. to see. There's a lot of people from No Ceilings that I saw that were like, man, the Spurs young core. You know, I mean... It mm-hmm. was just it was just a really good performance from him. And when you talk about that Spurs young core, I don't want to move too far from Malachi, but Blake Wesley had his best game in a while in game two with 18, seven and five on seven of nine shooting. Man, if he can, it's very similar to Malachi. If he can get that pull up jumper off of a screen in the mid range, yeah. like down, like, like it looked last night. I mean, it, those are just easy buckets for those guys because Malachi, he's a little bit more crafty in the way that he beats his defender. Blake's yeah. just fast. So yes. he can just go around him and find the space. And all it comes to with him, when you look at the first game where he struggled a little bit more in comparison to the second game, it's the same thing we really talked about all season, Ethan. It's just control. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad you brought that up. And all credit goes to Matt Nielsen and Blake with this because he is, it is obvious the entire game plan is centered around, okay, my point guard is ungodly fast, so we're going to push it (laughs) in transition. And that's what they've done. And they get the board, they give it to Blake, and they run as fast as they can. And if he gets ahead of steam, especially with that 10 pounds of muscle, he's getting to the cup pretty Mm -hmm. much any time he wants to. I know that will be more difficult when he gets to the NBA. Knock on wood, it is summer league. But it's still really nice to see that he's been working on his control because last year you know the how as quickly as he was moving last night last season he would have probably lost the ball or turned it over and he really has fine-tuned a lot of those things in his game so that's excellent to see let's hope it continues especially with Wemby coming out I like to see how well he does with Wemby especially in those screen and roll situations um definitely his best game I'm looking forward to seeing the rest of the summer league with him yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just to since we touched on Champagny's, what he was listed at, I'll touch a little bit on Blake and Malachi as well, because there were some differences. And it's kind of interesting. I'm pretty sure they still listed Blake at 180, even though that's what they listed him at last year when he said he gained 10 pounds of really? muscle. So that's no I mean, but that's just an example of like how who knows at yeah. the end of the day. But the, the thing is, they still they listed him at 6'4", 180, which was different than last year. Um, not that it's still a combo guard build, so I'm cool with it. But Malachi, they have it six, six, five. Obviously, we already knew that, but they have him at 195 now. And just, Mm. you know, there were times last year where I remember we had to play him at the three. Um, and it was more just due to injury and the nature of last season. Um, (laughs) but really, I think that Malachi, his versatility, and this is just the theme with the whole team. And he even said this in his pre summer league interviews. He, he's like, I feel like I'm really versatile. He's somebody who now it really feels like can play one through three as well. For sure. Obviously more of a combo guard, but with some injuries, just with that frame um, and the way that he looked, uh, he's definitely, and with that second year jump in coming, he's going to be able to physically, you know, play with those guys a little bit more as well. Absolutely. And we have so much versatility. He can play the three and still not technically be playing the three, yeah. you know, because yeah. like, we have Sohan that can play one through right. five. Wemby can play three through five. Like there's so many different lineups that Pop could utilize. It wouldn't necessarily put him at a disadvantage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Ethan, that's kind of anything else on the California Classic before we jump into previewing what what's to come tomorrow. Shout out to Matt Nielsen. He is he is pulling out all the stops. I'm extremely impressed with the just cohesiveness and organized basketball that is being played because usually it's not it's not like that yeah the chemistry as well I mean they just came out all cylinders firing even in that second game you know a little bit more of a dog fight Mm -hmm. but pulled away at the end still got the double digit win um just exactly what you want to see heading into Vegas and you know you saw it on the video that the Spurs posted last night they're like two and oh we feel good and it was Blake and he Mm -hmm. was like we're getting Wemby next and it's just like oh yeah me and my friends were watching it last night and we just had that realization like we just kind of won and two the second one wasn't as much of a blowout but still like two kind of semi-dominant performances definitely the first one Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's like we're about to add freaking victor dude yeah <laughs> like oh this summer league team we're going for the chip man this is yeah, 2014 are. vibes kyle anderson becky hammond jonathan simmons except it's like an entire team of solid 19 to 20 year olds something i forgot to say first of all you're correct 
But something <laughs> I something I forgot to, to mention. No, please. Uh, CD Sissoko. Right. We need to talk about him. Obviously struggled offensively a little bit. And to be fair, he only got four shots in the second game. I don't know how many he got in the first game. And there's obviously a lot of other scores on the court, so he's not going to get that many looks mm-hmm. or opportunities. But I thought defensively, he was already at A1. Like, this guy, what he did to Brandon Miller in game one was just unholy. Like, he's got See, a what man's Barlow body. did to him. Both, like, the, the whole sorry. team, to be honest. Yeah, just yeah. Both Champagne and Barlow were just locking him up. Yeah. So... Right now, he's kind of playing that glue guy role, which is kind of what yes. you were talking about um, when we drafted him. And I think that's very suitable for where he is. Obviously, there's room to grow. Uh, but for anybody that's just looking at the box score, like he's not a bad player. Don't judge him based on the bad box score. Go yes. actually watch the game. He actually yes. he has skills, and, he, and he's very capable. Yeah, I my take on CD is he should just still find in his place. Yeah, for and, sure. And when you take into account that... <laughs> Champagne scored 58 points in the first two games. Mm-hmm. Malachi had 32. And then even in that first game, like you had Barlow. Like there were two other people who had 25 plus points or 24 plus points, excuse me. At all and then in the third game, you had Blake with 18, mm-hmm. Champagne with 28, and Malachi with 32. He's not trying to score, man. No, no yeah. <laughs> he's, not not trying even... to, he's just trying to go out there and play basketball and see how he can contribute because these guys are just at a different spot than he is. Mm-hmm. Um I guess what I would say is with the Champagne signing and um, with the Spurs history, we'll have to see how it plays out. We talked about this before on a different episode and said we kind of felt like CD would get that full contract. I would say that maybe there's a higher chance after watching these first two games that he gets the two way. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know for a fact. But I, that's just one thing I guess I would take. If there's something to take away from it, I know you got something to say. Yeah, go ahead. That's, that's kind of all I would say. The the other thing is just he's just playing his role, man. And you yeah. can say, oh, well, he's trash and you're just not acknowledging it. I'm like, yeah, it's his first two games with a new team in summer league. And uh, like his role is completely different than it was on the Ignite. Like it's even less than it was on the Ignite. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, he has experience with that because of his two years in Spain and this. So he's just going to go in there and contribute where he can. And if that's four points, three boards, and three assists, and they still win, he doesn't really care. <laughs> you know what For I mean? Sure. Well, because that's just his role right now. That's the DL role that you were talking about. But uh, I think it's pretty safe to assume that he's getting the two way because we forgot to mention. We also have Chetty Osman now. Oh, and Lamar Stevens. And Lamar Stevens. So there's just not room for him to get that guaranteed <laughs> contract. He cut up. those guys. I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. We just put out the welcome. Uh, post and Reggie Bullock. Bullock. And, and Reggie Bullock. Yeah. We I did. I didn't see that. Yeah, we haven't posted the Reggie Bullock welcome, but the other two guys have gotten their welcome posts. Okay, so. that would that would make sense. And I actually, you know, I didn't. I, I to be honest, I only knew who Lamar Stevens was through two K. Um, I'd never heard of him. I mean, I knew he was on the Cavs. I might have seen him like in a game, but I guess apparently he's a little bit better like than I thought he was. Not even saying he's going to make the team, um, but I guess that they called him a junkyard dog in Cleveland. I saw an article about that. Um, I, like I believe those. it was pounding the rock. Yeah, just right at saying what he could bring to the Spurs. So we'll we'll, we'll see what happens, you know, whenever you know it what, comes. You know what, dude? What's He's going to be a great player because <laughs> we have just picked up the the trash from other teams and turned them into Bassie capable Bassie and Champagne. Bassie and Champagne. We are just – Mamu, I know he's not with us right now, but Mamu too. Or he is – No, yeah, he but signed yeah. No, he yeah. signed oh, a contract. Yeah, I'm stupid. <laughs> He is with us. Mom was another one. So that's where it's interesting. Like if those two guys make the team, because I'm pretty sure our roster was already full before we got Shetty. We may have like one more spot. You know I, what I mean? We'll right. have to make another video. <laughs> breaking right. it down. Cause let's see. We, yeah, no, that's, that's, you're right. That's just so in the weeds. Um, we'll, we'll get back into contracts and stuff, but yeah, Serge Abari Rice, Dominic Barlow, and I'm forgetting who else is the other two way spot. Maybe that will end up, end up being CD, but I think there might've been somebody else. We'll have to see. Let's get to the Summer League coming up tomorrow, Ethan. Mm-hmm. Yes. Victor Wembanyama will make his debut against the Spurs on ESPN at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Um, because we're talking about Victor Wembanyama, Britney Spears, I'm your op. Don't touch him. All right? Now now that that's out of the way. Um, mm. I mean, just tell me what you're feeling about tomorrow night, seeing him in a Spurs jersey for the first time, dude. It feels like a dream. 
I'm so beyond <laughs> excited. And I just remembered that I have family coming in tomorrow. So I'm going to have to explain to them while, while I'm at dinner, I will be having with my phone on the table watching Dude. Victor Wimanyama. Bearing that was us last night. <laughs> yeah, and I Victor just, wasn't even playing, but like explaining to your family, like, yeah. I'm sorry. It's just, you know. It, this is monumental. It's monumental. <laughs> I got to see how Malachi plays tonight. <laughs> yeah, literally. I was also at, at dinner. I'm sorry. Time? Go ahead. No, I don't want to think I was. But yeah, that, that'll be me at a at, at dinner table with my phone out watching the extremely monumental moment of Victor Wimbledon <laughs> taking the floor. And I don't really care. I would like him to play well. But I'm not even worried about him having an embarrassing moment or a viral fall or, oh, he gets bought. I'm not worried about that at all, Jude. I'm sure mistakes will be made. I'm sure an embarrassing moment will happen. Who cares? This is Victor Wimbanyama. The future is bright. He's wearing a Spurs jersey. I couldn't be more happy. Yeah, dude. I mean, it, it with the way these first two summer league games, like I said earlier and alluded to with me and my friends, like having that realization we're adding him to this roster. Yeah. Um, it, it just feels so good, man. We're also going to get to see Serge Abari Rice. He wasn't on the Sacramento team, so we'll get yes. to see him on the team as well. I think that's really adding talent to the roster. We need to go for the chip, man. That's we like do. that's what I'm. That's what we're here for. That's the mentality we should have. Um, yep. You know, and it's just going to be so fun watching him go up against the other you know stars that are playing. It'll be interesting to see how long he plays and how many games he plays. Um, yeah. But I think regardless of that. Like we just saw with the California Classic, this Spurs team should should have a shot unless we just we, we could just bench him and Malachi. But hey, we won the game without both of them the first time in blowout fashion. True. So, you know, it, it should be a good summer league is the point. But, you know, that there's not really too much speculation that I could say because we don't know what we're going to see from him until we see it tomorrow. But yeah. what I would say is I'm just excited to see how he plays off of our guys on the roster specifically. I'm excited to see him in pick and rolls with Blake and Malachi. I'm excited to see him and Barlow in the front court playing together. I'm excited. And the more I'm thinking about it, I'm just like, I want to see how everybody else does with yeah. him on the court, man. Like, Ooh. I want to see how much, like, the impact of that and, and just see, you know, if their jobs, how much easier their jobs may end up being. You're getting me excited right now, dude. <laughs> I haven't think, I'm, I'm just so... think about it. Like, I was just thinking about Barlow. I was like, dude, Barlow, <laughs> yeah. you give him in the front court with him, like, that makes his life like oh. a thousand times easier. And also the fact that I think our entire starting lineup and even some bench guys are going to be people that are actually on the roster. Because yeah. what? You'll have Blake, Malachi, CD, Champagny, Wembenyama. And then you yeah. still got Serge Barry Rice off the bench. And Barlow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it could be Barlow in the starting lineup. Who knows? Yeah. But, I mean, that's that's seven rotation guys on your summer league team that are actually going to be on your roster. So it's just a super unique situation for the Spurs. Brian Wright planned it out perfectly, and I'm so excited to watch tomorrow, Ethan. Over-under, last point, over-under, how many fouls does Victor <laughs> Brandon Miller have oh. <laughs> at halftime? Dude, no, 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 no. So we're playing them again? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're blowing them out. No, like we're blowing them out oh, bad. No. Does like, he get a poke? Does he put? Okay. Does he maybe, put him on a post? Maybe I shouldn't say that. I mean, look, we already did without him. I mean, it probably won't be as much of a blowout just because yeah. of that. But, uh, I, you know, maybe Vic, maybe Brandon Miller will just click against Wembenyama. But <laughs> I hope I don't. I, I, I think that this should be a good night for the Spurs tomorrow. And for Brandon Miller fouls. I'm going to give him, I'm going to be nice to him. And I'm going to say he figures it out because I watched those first two games. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm going to say he only has four the entire game. But okay. if y'all don't know, he had five before halftime in the second game he played in Sacramento. And that was, and then eight total at yeah. the end of the game. And then in the first game, I believe he had seven total. Yeah. And that was like, also like most of them were in the first half. And, yep. and, and the thing was, the worst part about it, and it's just summer league, we'll, you know, we'll have to see what happens, but it was just his body language, the way he was responding to it. He wasn't that that's why everybody was talking about it as much as they were. And obviously, that's a lesson you got to learn as a young player. But it's like there's some other young players that are already playing right now that are rookies that aren't doing that type of stuff. Like, for example, Chet just came back, right? Yeah. And even if he didn't have the most otherworldly performance, he wasn't... He looked right. right. I was going to say, it, it, it was completely different than what you saw from Brandon Miller, foul-wise. Yeah. Like, he, he's got some he's got some adjustments to make that that I didn't... I mean, it's, it's kind of surprising, honestly, when I look back at his Alabama tape. But anyways, Ethan, the Spurs are on tomorrow at 8 o'clock. 
Uh, any other thoughts kind of just going into Vegas Summer League to wrap this one up? Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. I'm, ex- I'm just excited to see that lineup, and I'm mm-hmm. excited to see all of the guys who are actually on the team play together. I already said that, but I'm going to say it again because it's worth it. We thank you guys for listening. Thanks for tuning into SSPN, and thanks for staying with us through mm-hmm. that little hiatus that I had there. I went to the beach. You can see my face is a little bit red, but we're ready for Wembenyama and the Summer League now. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. And if you want to stay updated with the show, be sure to follow us on Twitter at SSPNYT, at Jude McLaren, and at Ethan underscore Quintero. We appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one. See y'all later.